Hey guys, Stanford here with Fun, and today I'm with Team 3647 Millennium Falcons here at the San Diego Regional. These guys have been incredible out on the field, making some super long distance shots, some of the fastest cycles here. Um, so we're going to run through some of the mechanical stuff that they used to accomplish that, their over the bumper intake, adjustable angle shooter, amp mechanism, all that fun stuff, um, some of the electrical that powers all of that, and some of the code that goes through uh, makes all of this work. So stay tuned for all that and more in another episode of Behind the Bumpers. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Go ahead and take it away, Ethan. Okay, so at the start of our build season, we began with a 24 by 24 inch drive chain uh, with Mark IV i SDS Swerve modules. Uh, we initially had L3, but we made a conversion over to the L4 with Krakens as our drive. Um, after that, we have an over-the-bumper intake that deploys downwards like so. Um, with that pass-through, we're able to basically, um, any angle the shooter is at or was logged at, we can pass through from the intake over into the shooter. Um, we chose an over-the-bumper intake as opposed to an under-the-bumper because initially on our Alpha robot, um, this is beta by the way, uh, we had an under-the-bumper that we couldn't really get to work right uh, and we were also worried about damaging our under-the-bumper drive chain tubes. Um, basically because uh, aluminum wall tubing is much harder to replace than this eighth inch polycarb. Um, so although this is out there and vulnerable, um, it's much easier to swap out than a bent piece of aluminum. Um, uh, after that, we have these two very compact gearboxes that both uh, act as gearboxes and rollers. So these rollers are powered by the gearbox and the pivot is also powered by the same design. Um, and it's very compact and it's just right on top of the swerves. Um, uh, sorry. After that, it's also very, very hot swappable. It's basically only held in by a max amount of like five bolts on each side. So if we need to hot swap the intake, which we have a complete spare of, we can just take off the five bolts on the side, on each side, uh, unwire it, and then hot swap it really easily. Um, and yeah, how much um, like prototyping and iteration did it take to get this intake really where you want it? Um, I believe we've had maybe like four or five variations of this intake. Um, a lot of it stems from here. Uh, we used to have triangular wedges instead of these grasshopper, or sorry, uh, they're inspired by Team 95, the grasshoppers, these rollers, and they allow it to center really, really well. So most of our problems came from centering, but these just passive rollers allow it to center really, really well and really consistently. Um, and we also used to use polycord right here as an infinity belt, but we switched to just a gear to keep these mechanically always opposite each yeah, other. Awesome. Yeah, I love me a good over the bumper intake uh, for this game. So let's go and go through some of the um, electrical systems that make all of this work. So for the electrical systems, um, we have everything powered from our PDH. And then um, we have three CAN buses, so two canivores, and then the Rio CAN chain. Um, the first like canivore uh, is to all the drivetrain um, motors and can coders so that if we like lose something else, the drivetrain doesn't die. Uh, and then the next one is to all the subsystems. Um, and then the last one is to like our two time of flight sensors because they can't go with our other ones. Um, and then on top of that, we switched to Molex connectors this year, um, which are like here and all over our robot because they're, uh, they, when they lock, they like stay super securely. Um, and they're also easy to like undo and change out for modularity. So that's been good. Um, and so on our robot, we have six cameras. Um, we have two in the front, then one on each side, and then one here, and another on each side, and then two uh, time of flight sensors on the robot on the shooter. So you mentioned some time of flight sensors. Um, how do you guys use that to help your shooting? 
Yeah, so we use the time of flight sensors to index a note in the shooter. We use two time of flight sensors. There's one in the back and one in the front. We mainly use the front one for intaking from the ground and the back one for intaking from the source, um, just because it's, it gives us more range to detect from and make sure and we make sure that we can get the note in the same place every time, because we don't want to have the note hanging out in the back or maybe touching the shooter. We want to make sure that we're always able to have it in the same place every time. So when we shoot, we don't have to wait for it to go all the way through, or we don't have to accidentally have a touch and just poop out the shooter. So we can have it in here the entire time. And let's go through some of the other uh, software that makes this thing go. Yeah, so the biggest improvement we made to our software this year was vision. So we have six cameras on our robot. Five of them are for uh, April tags. One of them is for the note detection. So for the five April tag cameras, we have four at a pretty wide angle with a 70 degrees field of view. And then this one in the front is a 25 degree field of view. So this allows us to see the April tags clearly uh, from long distance, from even from the center line. So that's how we get our center line shots so consistent is we can still use the vision updates from this since it's uh, so, so much zoomed and uh, it allows us to see the April tags much more clearly from a far distance. Um, so we are able to get a lot of vision updates. And since we do so much filtering, we're able to get our position within around a centimeter or two at pretty much every uh, position on the field. So that's why even if our wheels slip or we crash into robots, we can correct almost immediately and be able to shoot from almost any distance. And then this last camera here is for note detection. So it points towards our intake. So we use it in both tele up and auto to automatically intake notes. So during auto, we have a custom path follower that allows us to override both the rotation X and Y uh, whenever we want. So uh, whenever we see a note in the, near the center line, no matter if it's still there or if it's been bumped by another team, we can still just automatically move to get it. So even if another team bumps them, uh, it, it doesn't mean we miss a note. So we also use IntelliUp too. Once the, uh, the camera sees a note, the driver can just immediately start driving back towards our speaker since the robot will just completely uh, automatically intake the note. Um, and he knows that through the LEDs. The LEDs, uh, like right now, they're yellow because we know we have a note in here. Uh, if I take the note out, it'll, it'll be yellow just because uh, it's not on right now, but uh, it's not enabled. But um, when, we're, when we're aimed, it turns green. And when we're climbing, it turns pink. And uh, when, we, it's the, when the camera sees a note, it turns orange. So it's really great for our driver to be able to know when he can actually shoot the shot, when he can intake, and, uh, so, and so on. And then, and like I mentioned, and like it was mentioned earlier, we can pass the note through to the shooter from any angle uh, because we run some inverse kinematics between the intake and the pivot. So we just make some triangles and uh, do some math to figure out what's the optimal angle to shoot into the into the pivot. So for example, at an angle like a steep angle like this, it might shoot like this to get into a straight line into the bottom. But if the pivot's lower, like here, it might shoot like this to get into a straight line into the pivot. So that's really useful for auto. So we can just keep the, no the, the wheel spinning up. So we don't have to ever have to wait to aim. We don't have to have to wait to index. We can just shoot it straight through whenever we want and it'll make the shot. Um, and then the last thing is that we do a lot of logging this year. We do all of our logging on a vantage scope. And uh, we, we log pretty much everything we have on our robot from the pose to the vision to each individual subsystem. So this is actually, a, uh, actually earlier in this tournament, uh, we had an issue with our connection from our radio to our radio and we were able to diagnose that by looking at the logs because we realized that even though we didn't have connection to our radio the orange pies which are connected to the cameras were still sending vision updates to the rio which meant that the only why that could have been bad was the uh, radio to the rio um, but if we didn't have our logging we wouldn't have known that until uh, a lot more testing the logging has been really great for us to um Make sure everything's in working order. And if you ever have a problem during a match, we know exactly what it is. We've also been able to use it to tune shots at this tournament. So sometimes during practice matches, uh, we try to shoot from really far, and then we can go through our logs, check what the distance was, check what angle we were at, and then we can adjust that in the code to make sure that for the next matches, uh, we can dial in those shots and make all of them, even at different field tolerances. Since some of the fields, maybe the April tags are a centimeter or two off, um, we can still hit the shots and we just want to make everything automatic this year. So pretty much the driver only has three real buttons, which are shoot, amp, and intake. The amp button will just completely automatically align him to the amp and he just has to release it to shoot. The shoot button will just completely spin the shooter to um, the speaker. It'll move the pivot angle and spin up the shooter, release it to shoot. And the same with the intake. Uh, he just presses the button and it'll completely drive for him. So he almost never has to um, actually do anything, any, any of the little finicky things and he can focus on what he's good at, which is the actual driving. And then um, we just want to make sure everything. And because of that, uh, we're able to actually not have an operator. So the operator can kind of, kind of act as a second drive coach just because 
we have such little buttons this year to make everything automatic. Cool. All right, well, let's uh, talk about kind of, I think one of my favorite features of this robot, and that's your guys' awesome shooter. So let's go in through, uh, go through that and see how it works. Yeah, so um, here we've got a shooter. Um, this is not our initial design. We initially had a set, one set of Colson wheels um, here, and um, that didn't shoot too accurately, unfortunately. And we realized it was because we didn't have enough uh, contact with the uh, note while it was shooting. So we added a second set of rollers um, up a little further, so then it would have way more contact on the note, and it would stretch it less while it was shooting through. So this helped us get really, really consistent shots and very, very stable shots as well. One of the most important things for our shooting is the differential system we have. So we have one Kraken running each side individually, and that allows us to put a lot of spin on the note, keeping it very steady in the air. Yeah, so that really allows us to shoot very consistently from uh, long distance, even the center line. We've been tuning our center line shots, and we've got those down. Your rollers uh, that looks like polycarb with a, a grip tape on that, yeah. was that mainly a grip concern, or did you get, or a weight concern? Or did you guys notice better shots um, with something like yeah. this? Yes, so initially with the Colsons, they were very heavy wheels and um, they took a long time to spin up and didn't have too much grip on the note themselves. So we switched to these polycarb rollers with uh, 3D printed hubs, which allowed us to get very, uh, very light wheels and we added the grip tape to have more grip. So having the light wheels with polycarb, these are eighth inch thick, by the way. Um, eighth inch thick is way more rigid and um, impact resistant. So it'll keep, um, it won't take damage even if we ran them into anything. So as you can see, these uh, side plates, um, we added these in order to get the second row of wheels on, allowing us to shoot um, way more steady shots. And um, these inner plates, these inner support plates were added to increase the rigidity of the shooter itself. So initially we didn't have these support plates, we just had a rod going all the way through, but that made, um, that made it vibrate a lot. So that vibration caused the note to shoot out pretty inconsistently, it would wobble a little. And then adding these support plates in here with um, these uh, tubes through the center increased the rigidity of the shooter a lot, making it way more consistent and shoot um, way heavier shots. Well, definitely one of the most effective shooters I've seen um, this whole season. So thank yeah, you. incredible job on that subsystem. So thank you guys for allowing us to come and see this amazing robot. These guys have been killing it out here at San Diego Regional. So uh, watch some of the matches San Diego. They've been amazing. And definitely check these guys out at championships. So thank you so much for allowing us to come by and interview you guys and good luck out there on the field. Support Funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button on any YouTube video to pledge your support.